The second Saw wasn't originally supposed to be a sequel, they just had a script lying around the office called The Desperate, appropriately so, and decided to rewrite it into a sequel to the biggest film of the previous year. This time the film has an AB storyline structure ripped straight out of TV sitcoms. The A follows a bunch of no-names and one of the characters from the previous film doing basically the same thing as in the last one, and the B follows a detective having a chat with the killer, finally giving the villain an actual character, something that probably should have happened in the last one, but better late than never. We learned a bit about his so-called morals that were hinted at in the last film and the backstory. Saying that I like it when the villains have a reason for doing what they're doing is a bit of an understatement, I hate it when they don't. Same thing for the hero, honestly. If the entire series was as good as the B storyline, we wouldn't have an issue, I wouldn't even complain about it. But then we have the A story and that's where it all falls apart. It offers absolutely nothing of value, we just see more gruesome and disgusting ways to die or be badly injured. The notes are not to use the key. Boy, is he lucky that the dude was looking through the peephole, otherwise nobody would die. Got the key. Oh wow, that happened again. And I'm pretty sure that after this scene, if Amanda didn't die by a bullet, she'd die of AIDS. I thought killing was distasteful, what happened to that? You just gave your student a life-altering illness. Ah, whatever, it's not like characters with consistent morals are way more interesting than just some dude who kills people depending on how he feels that day. Every time the film cuts to these guys, I just sort of nod off, but I do like it how it ties into the B storyline. You see, one of the first things that Bean says to Detective is... The rules are simple. What do you have to do is sit here and talk to me. What? If you can do that long enough, you will find your son in a safe and secure state. Ends up he meant it quite literally. That's still not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than the twist in the first movie where there was basically no setup at all. I'll give this one a 4. Since I made a review for Saw 1 2 months ago and now for Saw 2, you probably think I'll go through the entire series, but I'm bored already. I'll skip movies 3 to 8 because they just blend in my head anyway. It's just an extended sequence of naughty TV quality scenes of people getting ripped apart, flashbacks to the only character the series has to offer, and an increasing roster of so-called characters that were supposedly working for this long dead man all along. If you really want to review for these movies, YMS did an okay job at summing them up, but I'm not gonna do that. But as bad as the films got, and they did, they were always self-aware. So it was never high art and nobody expected it to be. They took the torture porn accusation and just rolled with it until 9. Maybe I'll do a review for that too, don't hold your breath though. Or do, until you check out my other video, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, thanks!